Joining us now is former Premier League referee Mark Clattenburg and the assistant editor of The Mirror, Darren Lewis. Welcome, welcome the Perry. Thank you, thank These you. are the big dogs. These are the we big are dogs. We are the big dogs now. <laughs> just, a quick, just a quick one on Darren Lewis, one of the first men I work with in the media, and he's helped me along the way. So Listen. for me to be sat here now asking you questions is a privilege for Unbelievable. me. Unbelievable. <laughs> brilliant, absolutely brilliant, right from the start. No surprise to be listening to you on the radio, driving in, enjoying every last minute of it. In fact, three guys, actually, because I enjoy watching you ref. Thank I enjoy you. watching you play, and we've had a bit of fun together as yes, well. We have. Have. Yes, so, we have. Yes, Friends reunited. Yeah, friends absolutely. reunited, certainly. Mark, Mark let's Mark, start Mark, with you. Go no, for I it. I just want to talk about Go Mark. For it. Just, he's never set me off, so I'm really happy that he's here. <laughs> 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 me neither, because yeah. how would wear, but we're he'd be a dog. Time, right? you see? He was like one of the lads when I was on the pitch. I'd have a little bit of back and forth with a little bit of bad That's what you want to, <laughs> that's the kind of um, stuff that you want to see from your referees, you know what I mean? Yeah, absolutely. And let's talk about your previous job. Um, a referee and an analyst at Nottingham Forest. You've recently left that role. I, I, I read a little bit about why you re why you left, and it, it didn't it didn't come across how it, it should have done. So, what are your thoughts on that role, first and foremost? Yeah, it was interesting because I wasn't a referee analyst. That was a title given to us by Sky Sports. This was never the decision by the owners mm. of Nottingham Forest. I think during the time in Greece, that's how I got to know the owner, Mr. Marinakis, and. We built up a, a, a relationship. Um, he understood, for example, my skill sets in coaching referees, mm. but also I understood the English game. Mm. So when he when he had troubles during the season where he certainly had a few run-ins with PGMOL, referees in particular, some poor decisions where, you know, there were key match decisions, not just decisions where you think, I've, I've lost the game, I might I should have had a penalty. We're talking decisions where it's 2-2, two -two, Newcastle, for example, should have been a penalty, could have been 3-2. And that's the difference between three points and, and probably more breathing space at the bottom three. And there was all of these, and he just wanted to understand some things about refereeing as well. So I wasn't just there for refereeing. I was trying to give them a sport and edge. Did it work out? They're the questions. Mark, I, I always think conversations like this are really good because everyone thinks that Everyone is on opposing sides at each other's fronts, but we get a chance to get a bit of an insight. I know in my profession there was an, an, an eyebrows raised, first of all, when you got the job, and there were some interpretations of the job as not really knowing what you were doing. Talk us through what you felt when you saw the questions that were being asked about what you were doing. It's hard, of course, because at the end of the day, I've, I'm trying to get a job, I'm trying to look after my family, and it was important that this rule isn't new around the world. Yeah. This this rule was used across all of Europe. Yeah. It's used in other sports. It was used in Rugby Union for the World Cup. So if it's given some sport and edge, why not? Yeah. Probably, on hindsight, it's a great thing. Is yeah. Could we have explained it more? Could Nottingham Forest explained it? Could I have explained it a bit better? That we could have looked at the rule and said, look, it's not just a referee analyst. I'm, Looking at tactics, yeah, consultant. I'm looking at tactics. I'm looking at, you know, giving the owner some sort of understanding about English football, which is important. And there was protecting PJ Moel because the owner was sometimes upset. Mm. For example, we played West Ham, and I didn't think Kelvin Phillips should have been sent off. So yeah. I said to the owner, it should have been sent off. So yes, we should have had a penalty. Not in a forest should have had a penalty. Yes. But the main point of the game was. West Ham were down to 10 players, yeah. which changed the course of the game. So I'm giving him that insight. All he focused on was the penalty. Yeah. What, did so, you mean, what did you mean protecting PJ Moyle? So I'm trying to, because we knew the relationship between PJ Moyle and Nottingham Forest were at rock bottom. Yeah. Yeah. So it, I'm, he was getting letters. They were sending many letters to the Premier League and PJ Moyle. So I'm trying to deflect some of that to give him an understanding okay. of where we were. So after that West Ham game, there would have been another letter for sure going into the yeah. Premier League. However, that was stopped because I said, look, let's look at it from a different perspective and let's look and say, look, West Ham were also wronged. So, yes, two wrongs don't make a right, but the balance of the game ended up where Nottingham Forest won the game and that was the most important thing. I think thing. a lot of people looked at the role and this is really helpful for you now to explain this because I think a lot of people driving around and, and listening at home, whatever, will get a better insight into it from your own yeah. uh, words. And I think a, a lot of people looked at it and thought, well, if he was going there and saying, uh, this referee's like this, so be careful, or that referee's like that, so, you know... I, they, I think they looked at it and thought we, that was a, actually a marginal game that all sports have. I think that 
the interesting thing about protecting the PGM while you were saying, because I think a lot of people were thinking, is he using relationships to try and get an unfair advantage? Which, obviously, you would never have done, I'm assuming. But I don't know, from your own mouth, did you see that interpretation and what did you make of that? Which is what, in English, mentality, because that's what you thought. We, mm. we thought it could help. And I've been out of refereeing for seven years. Yeah. So I haven't been in the Premier League. Yeah. We're in a new batch of referees. Yeah. So I refereed with people like Martin Atkinson, Andre Mariner, who have now left the organisation. So we've now got a new batch of referees. Yeah. Yeah. So I don't know them personally. I haven't got their mobile phone numbers. Mm. I've left the PGM well. I left them in good st state. Yeah. I left them in a high. I decided to go to Saudi Arabia for personal pre, reasons. Pre VAR. Of course. Yeah. But I, I, listen, we can talk about VAR in a second. But when I left the Premier League, I decided because I'd done everything in the game, I'd refereed every Premier League game, I wanted a new challenge, yeah. I wanted to give my family some security. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Because you never know in life. Yeah, Absolutely. You know? Yeah. So yeah. I, I decided to do this, and I felt this role at Nottingham Forest was a positive. Yeah. But it turned out from day one, it was a complete negative, and the attacks that I received from, from TV companies, from newspapers, wow. Talk from about fans. That. Talk about that. It's hard because your family's reading this. For yeah. example, there's an example. A presenter on Sky decided yeah. to say I should lose my job. How did my daughter feel when she went to school in her school? Mm. And she's now thinking, is she going to leave? have to leave that school because dad hasn't got a job anymore? So I had that stress to deal with my family. So, so how do you handle that? How do you handle that, Mark? You've got to sit down with your family and you've got to explain that everything's okay. You know, dad's got other roles. Dad can support you in other ways. Yeah. So I'm, I'm a family man yeah. as well as I'm trying to earn a living yeah, of course. and add some value to Nottingham Forest. Because I felt I did add some value, but the pressures around it was too much. Did you see why uh, the presenter was saying that? Did you, could you understand why he was saying that? I can understand the negativity because you, like you, you said before, you thought, and a lot of people thought, I was going in to see the referees and I was trying to influence the referees. That was absolute rubbish because yeah. I didn't know them. Also, I think they tried to attach the tweet that was made after the Everton football match where, in my opinion, the referee made two mistakes. Yeah. Yeah. The club fell three, I fell two. I had nothing to do with that. That's something from the highest level. Yeah. I'm just a consultant. Yeah. And I can only advise on some things. Yeah. If some things are coming from the very, very top, which happens at all football clubs, that's got nothing to do with Mark Lattenberg. Sure. When you talk about how the decisions that were made against Nottingham Forest and how it affected them, why then, when the vote took place, the Wolves obviously wanted VAR scrapped, the vote took place, why wasn't Nottingham Forest back in Wolves? Why is it, why, why it 19-1 in favour of VAR, would you say? Wait. First of all, I don't think anybody believed that the vote would be a negative no. vote. Yeah, I think no, I agree. As a football club, you've got to work out what is the, the best situation here. Yeah. I think VR has a positive impact in football. Yeah. The problem what we've got, and this is what not everybody understands, they have an independent panel, ex-players, ex-coaches, that look at the decisions every week. And if I use the example Anthony Gordon on Amrabat, where it's impossible for the referee to see yeah, this. Yeah, yeah. But the VAR has all of the angles. You can see socks yeah. damaged. Anthony Gordon's in a distressed state. Therefore, this should have been a penalty kick. The independent panel comes back and says 4-1 that it should be a penalty. Mm. We accept that. I yeah. think most people in the game said it was Absolutely. a penalty. However, the independent panel comes back and said it's not a VAR intervention. And that's what the oh. confusing thing is because if four people are saying it's a penalty, so 80% of the panel are saying it's a penalty, but 100% are saying it's not an, an mm. intervention. And that's the confusion, even with working for a football club. And Mr. Marinakis has said, I can't understand this. I can't understand it either, because for me, if it's a clear error like this, and it's 4-1, it should be a VAR intervention. Do you think there's too many people in the kitchen make, trying to make decisions? I think, I think, no, I just think they've complicated it. I think we're right now in a, you know, Howard Webb's took over, positives, but the problem you've got is you teach the players and the coaches and the fans at the start of every season, these are the law interpretation. Not the laws of the game, interpretation of the law. What's a handball, what's not, what's a red card, what's not. The clubs get that at the start of the season. And what you're seeing is the, the referees are VARs, VARs, VARs are referees. So they should be under the same, same interpretations. And what you're getting now is a referee misses it, which happens if you've got some young referees out there now are going to make mistakes. I made mistakes when I was a referee. 
but the VAR's not putting them right because they're not following the same process what they should have been as a referee. If they see that as a penalty, like the handball at Everton, for me, that's a clear handball. Yeah. He's made his body bigger. That's what the clubs were told at the start of the season, but they're not saying, they're saying that it's not a penalty because the VAR doesn't want to interfere. Do you think that the relationships between the referees complicate the issue? Maybe if you had an independent VAR, then he's not thinking, I'm throwing my mate under the bus here. I think, it's imp I think that's an important, that there's a lot of things that we're going to add value. I think what Howard Webb's done in the Premier League are, you know, we, we've seen the new, you know, recommendations for next season. One of them, that, that's a key message, is that the Premier League want the game not destroyed and inter like interrupted every five minutes yes. for a VAR yeah, for a VAR look. So they want to keep the product. They want to keep the what makes the Premier League successful around the world. So therefore, when you put that high bar of intervention you're going to get mistakes that you are going to still have the same discussions next season because the referees aren't following the basics, basics of what what we're normally given for the training at the start of the season and for me if that's a handball and we would whistle it in champions league why we're trying to find it difficult by making some different interpretations within the premier league yeah. and players are finding it difficult when they go abroad because in same in the euro they'll be under different instructions yeah. mm. what they're normally in the yeah, premier league yeah. And UEFA, UEFA is very strict in some things. You made a point about, you know, you want a, a job and all that. I, I look at somebody like yourself and I say that there is a role for somebody like yourself, forward thinking, who understands the need to evolve the game, to yeah. listen to the players as well. I don't really see a set of circumstances why you can't be working with the Premier League, with Howard, and, and coming up with ways forward that address what players, what fans, what clubs, what owners are thinking. I don't think this should be the end from our I think that's though. the main part, the owners as well, yeah. and which what you're always trying to do to get them to understand, consultant for Nottingham Forest. Now, when you, when, you, when you see that, do you think there's a future for your role again in the Premier League? No, I don't. Oh, wow. And it's all across Europe already, this role. I think the problem is there's such such resistance, and I don't know if it was because it's Mark Clattenburg, if it was another person inside, because what you understand is every club has an, an ex-referee, probably from the lower mm. leagues, and they look after the referees from the moment they arrive to the moment they leave. That's yeah. been in place for as long as I was a referee. The problem was... Just for people who are listening, what do you mean every club has an ex-referee? So the, what, what they do is like uh, referee liaison. Right. So they look after the referee team. The moment they arrive in the people carrier at the stadium, there's a person to meet them to make sure that they've got yep. drinks, they've got to make sure that they're comfortable, they've got everything, towels, everything they need to have the perfect match day. Mm. Because what you do want, and I said this to Nottingham Forest, you want to give the referees the best experience. Yep. Not for a team, because yep. you want the weird team not to enjoy the dress rooms, yeah, yeah. but as a referee... You want to make sure that they're as comfortable as possible and have the best experience because they're leaving a positive way. On AM, on DAB, via the TalkSport app and on your smart speaker. TalkSport.